A life of bliss. Being the biography of Bachelor Bliss, with Brenda Bruce as Anne Fellows, Colin Gordon as Tony Fellows, Muriel Pavlo as Tina Holliday, and George Cole as the shy young man himself, David Alexander Bliss. How does Bliss feel about the teenage cult? Not the most original question, but as the delicious confusion of our previous conversations has made me something of an addict, it served as an excuse to speak to him again a couple of days ago. Honestly, I can't think of anything more aging than being asked for my opinion on teenagers. I gather you've got a 15-year-old niece, David. Yeah, and a daughter, yes, Carol Feathers. But as she's away at school, and I haven't seen her since I went abroad, it's no good asking me about her. No, but some people seem to look upon the fact that boys and girls of her age have dates with each other as something new. Yes, and some look on it with disapproval, too. True, you had the limitations of being shy, but didn't you have romantic interests at that age? Oh, good heavens, yes. I had a terrific fashion on our art mistress at school. <laughs> yes, but I can't believe your interests were that limited. No, how do you mean? Didn't you have any girlfriends, and even, even... Let's see, how can I put it? Well, hello, here comes this week's catch question. <laughs> Even indulge in a mild form of snogging. Ah, oh, no, 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 look, you, you, you will ask me these personal questions, and I, I, I can't believe anybody's interested in knowing. Knowing what? Well, that at that time, I went the limit with 15 girlfriends. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> Even as a boy, I had 15 mistresses. <laughs> no, no, no. What's the use? Try to evade the question, I land myself in worse trouble. So what's the answer? That apart from joining in the usual Christmas party games, I still hadn't kissed a single postman. Uh, but <laughs> Fifteen, I'd still got a single girl in trouble. You know. <laughs> no, indeed not on sound radio. Hurriedly over to his married sister's house for Guardian Angel. <laughs> Well, Carol's arrived home for her half-term holiday then, Anne. It's collected her off the school train this afternoon. It's amazing to think that when I last saw her, she was only 12. Yes, well, she's grown up a lot since then. I must say, I'm dying to see her. She went straight upstairs, muttering something about getting out of her school uniform and making herself look presentable. Do you know, I, I doubt if I'll even recognise her. I doubt if I will when she comes down again. Why? When a 15-year-old girl says she's going to make herself look presentable, it has an almost sinister ring. Uncle David, how absolutely super to see you again. Hello, Carol. Mm. Oh, now then, let's have a look at... Good gracious, you really have made up. Uh, have grown up. <laughs> well, of course. You haven't seen me since you went abroad. Don't you find England a drag after all those super tropical countries? No, I'm happy to be back. I must say you're looking great. Well, you're looking pretty sinister yourself. <laughs> you're looking very pretty. She really is behind that mask. Oh, now, Mummy, don't let's start that old argument. I always wear makeup when I'm at home. Yes, and at first you always make the same mistake. The secret of makeup lies in how you put it on, not how much. I haven't got all that much on. If you had any more on, you'd topple forward under the weight. <laughs> you don't need that mass of mascara and eyeshadow pop it. Now back upstairs and wipe it off. I suppose it wouldn't be because Daddy disapproves. No, it's because I don't want people to think I ill-treat my daughter. Ill-treat me? <laughs> Two lovely black eyes. <laughs> Come on, off you go and then bring the makeup down and I'll give you a free lesson in beauty culture. Oh, gosh, would you? That'd be great. Oh, but, Mum, uh, could I ring Jeremy first? A quick call, yes. The phone's here, look. Um, I'll make it in the other room, if that's okay. Uh, super seeing you, David. Well, what do you think of her? Well, it's staggering. Well, I mean, she's not only shot up by about a foot since I last saw her, she's altogether... Um, well, I mean, she, she, she's, she's grown up in every... Um, I mean, well, she, she, she's filled. <laughs> Generally. Would well-developed be the word you're looking for? Oh, good heavens, no. I wouldn't dream of dis... Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> Well, I was too at her age. It's lovely to see her, of course, but, oh dear, I do find these short holidays a terrible wrench. What, because you have to say goodbye to her again so quickly? No, because she and Tony always engage in a rather grim game of tug of war, using me as the rope. The performance we get from Tony for the first few days of any holiday is quite incredible. Performance? Plays the heavy father. Oh, I believe that when I see it. Have you ever seen the Barretts of Wimpole Street? What, the play? Yes, of course. Well, imagine Papa Barrett, played by James Mason, and you've got Tony. <laughs> Darkly warning me that we must beware of the dangers and face the facts. Well, face what facts? Oh, come now, Poppet, you saw her a moment ago. Yes, I mean, it really is staggering. I sh oh, gosh, I see those facts. <laughs> uh, I see Tony's point. Well, for goodness sake, do you think I don't? A pretty teenage daughter poses the most awful problems for any parent. 
And as often as not, her mother has the added problem of father. Mum, can I go to the... Oh, mind outside. He's still the old thing. All right. Go to the cinema tonight. Um, Jeremy says there's a super film at the Ritz. Oh, not on your first evening home, darling. Well, he may not be free tomorrow. Well, come to think of it, your father has got a business dinner tonight. All right, then. But hurry up and get off the phone and then go and wipe all that makeup off. Won't be a sec. Who's Jeremy? Her boyfriend. A boyfriend at her age? Oh, you're as bad as Tony. He still thinks of her as a little baby girl. Oh, I'm sorry. It came as a surprise, that's all. Kissing games at parties were about my limit. But that's no reason why Carol shouldn't start it. Start what? Well, having babies by post. <laughs> <laughs> having dates. Having dates for the postman. <laughs> and a... Uh, don't be silly. He's not here now. That was just me. <laughs> oh, good gracious, quickly. The local paper. Ah, yes, here it is. Well, what prompted that? I want to find out what super film Jeremy's got. Ah, here we are. Entertainment's Ritz. Oh, good grief. Tony will never let Carol go to that. What? Pools of desire. <laughs> yes, but it's, it's okay. Look, it's Certificate U. I know. But even so, with that title, Tony's going to write it off as another, um... Oh, that famous American play. Some years ago. You know, they made it into a film. Uh, Streetcar Named Desire. Now, that was definitely Certex. Yes, but this film cert you. And unless I'm mistaken, that means it's been passed as suitable for children. So? Well, you're not going to tell me Tony's likely to quarrel with the censor. <laughs> if he can get hold of him, definitely. <laughs> now, let's see. They usually give a brief summary of the... Ah, yes. Pools of Desire. Shipwrecked on Desert Island plot brought up to date by psychological approach. Well, so far, so good. So far, so, so. Forfeit a point for psychological. Now, castaways... On a 19-year-old boy and 18-year-old girl. Forfeit five points straight away. Well, both products of the modern age, tough, cynical, suspicious. They learn to fend for themselves. Pick up a couple of points. Why? That should keep them busy. <laughs> to live on pawpaws and passion fruit, and indirectly to strip off the veneer of civilization. Pick up five points for stripping off the veneer. To swim, <laughs> swim naked in the island. Forfeit them again for stripping off too much. <laughs> in the island pools, to rejoice in the simple life. Pick up a couple of points for that. And falling in love, to discover the essential innocence. Pick up another five. And purity, pick up five more of sex. <laughs> Take away every number you first thought of. <laughs> now let's see, what's on at the plaza? Uh, spice at a price, X. That was a cert. So we're stuck with the pools of desire. Which, at the risk of repeating myself... Has got a U certificate, I know. But if Tony reads this, I still think he'll stop Carol from... Do me a favour. Tell him that you and Tina have seen the film and that it's perfectly harmless. Oh, yes, of course. And conveniently forget the title. Forgotten it already. And if he asks you what it's about, could you tone the plot down a bit? An adventure story about two castaways learning to fend for themselves and to live on pawpaws and passionless fruit. OK? <laughs> Yes, but don't make it sound too pat. I think perhaps you'd better leave it to... All fixed up. Jeremy's going to call for me at eight. Never mind about that. Go and do something about your face before your father... Oh, good heavens, I believe I heard the car. Now, go on, darling, hurry. I'll be up in a second. David, tell him we popped upstairs for a moment, but not why. Needless to say. I must confess, it gave me quite a shock when she first walked in, plastered in makeup. Well, I'll go and get her de-plastered. Well, fine watchdog you are, Psyche. You bark at a non-existent postman, then fail to hear the car. Hello there. Oh, hello, Tony. Carol's just this moment popped upstairs plastered. <laughs> so, plaster would fall down if she always made as much noise. Yes, I know. I heard her prattling on about going out with her boyfriend, Jeremy. Of course, this is the first time you've seen her, isn't it? Oh, since I got back from abroad, yes. Mm. It's amazing. I mean, she's a young woman now. No, oh, David, no. Still a child, a sweet, innocent child. That's why it's so important for Anne and I to, well, to be aware, aware of, of the it. dangers and face the facts. I see. So Anne's been talking about me. No. Uh, Carol has grown up, though. I mean, she, she shot up by about a foot for a start. How do you think she's developing? Um. <laughs> well. And apart from that, she's intelligent. Get that from her father. Nice kid, though I say it myself, but strong will. <laughs> Probably gets that from her father, too. Uh, perhaps, yeah. Well, no perhaps about it, Papa. She's a typical Barrett. <laughs> uh, a typical um, <laughs> fellow. Yes, and before you start jumping to conclusions... I already have. <laughs> and Anne's right, I do play the heavy father in a good job, too. Anne's far too... Oh, while I remember... When's Carol supposed to be going out with young Jeremy? Well, tonight. He's taking her to the pictures. What? Her first night home? Well, yes, but Anne thought it'd be all right because you're going out to dinner on business, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes. 
Yeah, and the film's harmless enough. I know, because I saw it with Tina. What's it called? Um, I don't even think now. Uh, oh, my memory. Um, what the dickens is the title of the thing? No, 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 it's no good. I, I've conveniently forgotten it. Conveniently? Um, <laughs> completely. But I, it'll, it'll come back to me later on. Yes, well, while we're waiting, you may as well tell me what it's about. Well, it's uh, an adventure story, really. About two streetcars who get shipwrecked on a... <laughs> two castaways who get shipwrecked on a desert island. I pride myself on being able usually to decipher your muddles, but I must confess I can't see where the streetcars come in. <laughs> Probably because they're not running anymore. <laughs> you know, seriously, though, it, it couldn't be more harmless. I'll decide that when I've heard more about it. Well, a straightforward plot about two castaways who learn to tone it down. Uh, to, to tone down their cynical outlook on life. Two men, I take it. Well, I might have known I wouldn't get away with that. <laughs> you know, not, not, not that I was trying to. Teenage boy and girl. But they learn to fend for themselves. Pick up a couple of points for that. I mean, that, that, that's a point in the film's favour. Why is it? Well, it keeps them busy. In other words, there's uh, no, no monkey business in it. Well, come now, Tony, what do you expect? On a desert island? You mean love scenes? No, I mean the island's alive with actual monkeys. <laughs> But no monkey business between the boy and the girl. Obviously. Why obviously? Well, they're too busy fending each other off. No, 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 too, too busy pawpawing each other. Forfeit five points and start again. They're too busy learning to fend for themselves. And, and that's about all there is to it. I, I thought it was quite good myself. But uh, Tina could have done with more action. Naturally, she was sitting next to you. <laughs> I could do with hearing the rest of the plot. They learn to fend for themselves. Then... To live on pawpaws and passion fruit and um, indirectly to strip off too much and get passionate in the pools. <laughs> Forfeit five points and try to explain. That is, I, 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 I promise you, it's quite suitable for a 15-year-old girl. The way you tell it, I'd think twice before taking Anne. <laughs> yes, but only because I got it all mixed up. What should you have said then? That they learn to strip off the veneer of civilization, to rejoice in the simple life and falling in love for falling in love with the street, live there happily ever after <laughs> on a diet of fruity desire. <laughs> Forfeit all chance of Carol seeing it. And that, of course, is where they come in. What? Streetcars named Desire. I should just tell Carol I'd rather she didn't see it, and that'll be the end of it. In you go, darling. Oh, Hello, Daddy. Darling. Marvellous to make up. Well, only a touch. I've been showing her how to put it on. I had to make myself beautiful for Jeremy. He's taking me to the cinema. Ah, now, I'm glad you mentioned that, because I've just discussed this film with Uncle David, and we've decided it's not suitable for you. With Uncle David? <laughs> then you're both square. Yeah, well, perhaps, darling, but I'd rather you didn't see it. You still think of me as a little girl. I'm 15 now. Yes, but I'm still your father, Carol, and in my opinion... I don't care about your opinion. You're still living in the Victorian era, disapproving of... Now, me. Carol, you mustn't speak to your father like that. Okay, then. I won't speak to him at all. Or to you. Or to anybody. Roll on the day when I go back to school. Well, shut up, Psyche. We've got enough atmosphere, thank you. <laughs> She's not to go and see it, Anne. And that's final. I must go upstairs and get changed. Do you think there's any chance of him changing his mind at the same time? No, but he might be persuaded to let her go tomorrow night instead. It'll only be possible on two conditions, though. Oh, what are they? That I talk to him myself and stop you talking to him altogether. I hate to interrupt the great mind at work, but remember me? I'm your girlfriend, Tina. Hmm? Sorry, who did you say? Unbelievable. Every single time we've met recently, your mind's wandered. Speeding up, too. I've only been here a couple of minutes. Ah, yes, but, but don't worry. I'll be able to devote my full attention to you the moment Anne's put Alexander to bed. I'm sorry. I don't see the connection. Well, it's obvious, surely. If Carol did anything silly, it'd ruin Anne's chances of talking Tony into letting her go to the pictures tomorrow night. So there you are. She's left me on guard. What? No, I'm the watchdog tonight. <laughs> what do you mean, left you on guard? We're expecting a breakout. Where is Carol? No, oh, she said she wasn't very good company and went into the next room there. She'd been playing pop music for about the last hour. No sound of music now. No, she stopped just before you arrived. And that doesn't worry you? Well, quite the reverse. Not that I've got anything against pop music, but uh, an hour of it's plenty for me. Record player or radiogram? What, in there? Radiogram. In that case, all she'd have to do is put a few long players on and just leave them playing. How do you mean? But don't you see? The pop music could have been a way of escaping. Well, more than likely. And still doesn't worry you? 
Good gracious, no. She'll soon get over it. Besides, you're right. Music is a form of escape. I, I know what I'm feeling. Come on, darling. I'd love to meet her, and I've got an idea. It may be too late. Oh, nonsense. Girl of 15 doesn't have to go to bed this early. I'll call her in. Carol, there's somebody here who'd like to meet you. Carol. 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 Tina, you're not going to believe this, but I think she's escaped. No. Yes, out through the window. The, oh, gosh, that's what you were trying to tell me. <laughs> what did all that mean? Fine watchdog I am. <laughs> what on earth can I say to Anne? Alexander's bed is down, so I thought, oh, hello, Tina. Have you met my grown-up daughter yet? Um, well, uh, no. She's gone, Anne. About an hour ago, I guess. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. It was all my fault. Well, on the contrary, you left me to keep an eye on her. That's why it's my fault. <laughs> I have known better. Look, I, I know Carol shouldn't have done it, but Tony's not likely to be home until half past ten or so, is he? No, but he's quite likely to ring up at about ten and say he'd like to say goodnight to her. Or, to put it another way... Check up on her. Well, then we've just got to get her back. Yes. So how do you feel about taking Tina to the pictures? Ah, uh, no, 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 listen, Anne. I was responsible. I wouldn't go to the pictures and leave you to comb the streets looking... Oh, hello, I'm off again. <laughs> That's where Carol is, of course. At the Ritz with Jeremy. Wearing a lightish coat. I noticed it was missing as I came through the hall. Um, five past eight. Well, with luck, the big picture won't have started. Interval before it. Better be on our way. Don't worry, Anne. We'll get her back. Increasing popularity of yachting throughout the world. It's one of those short documentary films, so it may be the interval next. Yes, but we can't stand out here in the aisle, and they're almost bound to be in the back row, so that's where we'd better sit. Two seats near the centre. Where? Ah, yes, I see. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse... What's the use? Oh, crikey. Sorry. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I... Fell into your lap by... No, no, no. No, no, no. You, you've got the wrong... Mm. Excuse me. Could I have my boyfriend back? <laughs> Thanks. I come to help find Carol and nearly lose you. I'd have been lost without you. You're obviously wrong about them being... Oh, oh, here we are. Here are the seats. Wrong about them being in the back row. I mean, look at them all. They stand to reason Carol and Jeremy wouldn't be... Well, you know. Canoodling? Why ever not? I... Oh, all right, don't, don't, don't tell me. You did at that age. Girl in lightish coat, your side, three seats along. Face is completely hidden, of course. Behind what? His, stupid. Lean forward and look along there. Yes, right up. Right forward? Yes, all right. You want to watch it, mate. There's a law against peeping toms. <laughs> <laughs> Better wait till the interval. Yachting in sunny California. Besides, if Jeremy's anything like me, you could still be wrong. I could? Yes, honestly. I hadn't canoodled with a girl in the back row at that age. Then belt up, mate, and make up for lost time. <laughs> You're so crude. Yes. But such good advice. <laughs> no, I've looked everywhere. Down at the front, upstairs in the circle, back circle, everywhere. Not a sign of them. Well, only two possibilities I can think of now. They're either at Jeremy's house... Or much more likely, just out somewhere, wandering around, starry-eyed. Time? Twenty-five to nine. We'd better be on our way. Oh, I, I, I got you a chalk ice from the, um, from the first girl I saw. Yes, but never mind. Open it at one end and I'll drink it on the way out. <laughs> Ten past nine already. Next gate along, I think. Yes, this is Jeremy's house. The fool that I am, I've just realised we could have phoned up and asked if Carol was here. Oh, we couldn't, you know. Jeremy's parents may think they're at the pictures, and we don't want them worried, too. You stay here, and I'll go and case the joint. Case it? Have a quick butcher's through a crack in the curtains. Yeah, I'll go and have a quick look myself. No, safer for you to be the lookout man. They don't know me, so I can always say I've got the wrong house. Now, keep your eyes skinned for Carol and Jeremy. And for the bogies. Bogies? Rosers, blue bottles, bobbies, coppers, if you want to know the time. We ask a policeman. Back in a second. Yes, right up. Excuse me, old boy. Oh, good heavens. Uh, I didn't see you swaying there. They were standing there. You were staggering. Oh, up, up, up. Up, 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 up you come. <laughs> Celebrating. 32nd anniversary. You've been married 32 years? No, I'm 32 and I've managed to avoid it. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, well, celebrating that, eh? Well, cheerio, then. <laughs> oh, do, do you happen to have a bottle of whiskey in one pocket and a bottle of gin in the other? No. That's OK, then. Only if you had, you'd be wearing my overcoat. <laughs> Darn cold without it. Oh, perhaps you left it in the pub. Ah, ah, the which pub? Tell, tell you what, could you direct me in the direction I came from? Only I'm a stranger around here. Yeah, that way. Friend for life. <laughs> Cheerio. Oh, happy birthday. Show me the way to go. Good evening, sir. Oh, good evening, Constable. I didn't see you swaying along. <laughs> You're uh, creeping up on me. You're uh, coming along. He's making a night of it, isn't he? Who? Oh, the chap without the overcoat. Yes, he is. Do you live here, sir? Well, not all that far away. But not in this house? Oh, no, no, not in this house. Oh, I see you. You're wondering why I'm standing outside it. Just routine. Oh, I'm just waiting for my accomplice. <laughs> uh, waiting for my girlfriend. Slip of the tongue, was it, the accomplice? Yeah, yes, it was, Bogey. Got a... <laughs> blue bottle. Got a rosa. Um, <laughs> if you want to know the time, ask an officer. <laughs> Sorry about that, only I've got something else on my mind. Your girlfriend, eh? Yes. And she lives here? Hmm? Oh, no, no, she's just casing the joint. <laughs> um, just having a quick go with the butcher. <laughs> Forfeit five points and try to explain. I'm all for the explaining part. Now, look, I've met jokers like you before, and I'm not going to stand Let here... Let go quietly, darling. You won't get more than three years, will you, officer? Now, what's this all about, then? His 15-year-old niece defied her father, went out with her boyfriend, who lived here. We had no idea where they were or what he told his parents. So but... you had a quick butchers through the curtains? Not there, though. And if we don't find her soon... Her dad's going to blow his top, eh? <laughs> Could you describe her? No, I'll have to leave that to David. Oh, pity. <laughs> Description, sir. No, I'm about uh, five foot ten... <laughs> Oh, oh, Carol, you mean. Um, ca Carol Fellows. Uh, quite tall for her age, brown hair down to her shoulders, pretty. Wearing a lightish coat. Right, if I spot her, I'll send her off home sharpish. Good night, miss. Night. Come on, phone box across the road. We'd better report into Anne. Yes, 20 past now. Zero hours coming up fast. <laughs> Sorry, Anne, I, I didn't catch that. I said, are you speaking from a call box? Yes, the one opposite Jeremy's house. That's how we know they're not there. We've been trying to ring you for ten minutes or so, but there was somebody on the line. Still, I I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Except that it was Tony on the line, ringing up to say he'd be home by ten and asking if he could speak to his dear little girl. Well, what on earth did you tell him? Well, that you'd gone round to Tina's and taken Carol along with you. To meet I her. say, that was quick thinking. Then I was rather pleased with it myself. And Tony swallowed it? No, oh, not a word of it. <laughs> so the first thing you want to do when he gets home is ring Tina's flat. Tina's out, so there'd be no reply? Oh, uh, Tina says her flatmate's out, so there'll be no reply. I know, I heard. I wish I hadn't. David, Tony doesn't know my phone number, does he? No, of course not. Why? Give Anne this number and let him ring us here. Anne? I heard. Tell Tina she's a clever girl and give me the number. It's Vail, 0115, Anne. And uh, one of us will stay in here all the time while the other continues the search for Carol. Okay? Message gratefully received. Over and out. Bye. Goodbye, Anne. Oh, good gracious. Only 17 minutes to zero hour. Which one of us is going to... David, about 75 yards or so down the road. Fifth street light along. A girl and a boy. That's her. That's Carol. Yes, well, you stay in here and I'll go. If they see you charging towards them, they might panic and run off. Ah, oh, look at them. Not even canoodling, just starry-eyed. And love can seem as real at that age as it does to you. Come to think of it, you've never told me you love me. No, but I've got a reminder in my diary. <laughs> I'll, um... I'll ring Anne and tell her the good news. I'll bring Carol back here. Well, it's only a couple of minutes' walk from Tony's house, so we're laughing. See you. Anne Fellows? Oh, hello. It's David. Listen. I'm listening. It's okay, Anne. We've found Carol. <laughs> Tony? Yes, I'm on the extension. Where are you ringing from? Tina's flat. Oh, I was going to ring you there as soon as I got my coat off. Uh, you were saying you found Carol. A positive delight. Uh, is she with you now? Um, well, no, she, um, she, she's um, out in the kitchen having a cup of cocoa. But I expect you'd like a word with her, so I'll, I'll just signal to Tina to hurry things along. Are there a lot of people there now? No, no, just Carol, Tina, her flatmate Sheila, and myself, that's all. My friend. And Sheila's boyfriend. <laughs>
Uh, uh, hold on, Tony. Found my coat, bottle of whiskey, gin in sacks. Yes, well, I, I'm glad about that, but this is... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Up you come. Uh, there we are. Uh, this, this is rather a private call, so... Uh... Oh, enough, enough said. Enough said. Cue for exit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, Tony. Sorry about that, but somebody walked into the box. You know, walked into a box of stuff on the floor. I hope you're not going to be too late getting back. Oh, no, no, don't worry about that. We'll be leaving here the moment I've got Carol drunk. <laughs> well, the moment she's drunk her cocoa. I'd like a quick word with Carol, David. Would you get her to the phone? Um, y- yes. Yes, right, uh, uh, hold on. Oh, dear. Excuse me, sir. Oh, it's you again, officer. I gather your girlfriend's found your niece. Yes, yeah, she's down there talking to them now, and I wish she'd stop. I've got Carol's father on the line. Oh, best of British luck. I'll need it. <laughs> Hello? I'm still waiting. Uh, yes, well, uh, Tina's gone to tell Carol you want to speak to her, officer, so she won't be a second. And what about the officer? Well, you don't want to speak to him, too, surely. <laughs> uh, well, uh, how, how on earth did you know about him? Look, David, I'm getting more and more suspicious every moment, so put Carol on the line. But no buts, David, put her on the line. Oh, gosh. Hello, Daddy. I'm having a super time here. Oh, for the love of Mike. Okay, Uncle David, I'll take it. Did you seriously expect to get away with that? Get away with what, Dad? Doing that impersonation. Carol? Yes? That wasn't you the first time, though, was it? That that was David. Well, when? When you first came on the phone. Oh, no. When I first came on the phone, it was definitely me. Yes, but... (laughs) Well, never never mind, Pat. Are you all right, Angel? Having a super time here. Good, but don't be too late getting back, will you? Leaving now. Splendid. Well, see you when you get home. Yes, all right. Bye, Dad. Ooh. Now, Uncle, before you say a word, I shouldn't have done it. I'm sorry, and I won't do it again. Oh, hello, Tina. Come along in. You couldn't have timed it better. I was just on my way down, having made myself look particularly smart for you. And I've got nothing else on my mind. I'll need proof of that. Any minute now. Anne and Tony are in there watching the telly, which leaves this room free for us. Oh, sorry, Carol. Hello, Uncle. This is Jeremy. Oh, hello, Jeremy. I, um, I, I, I thought Daddy said you were going to see that film tonight, Carol. Well, yes, we were going. Till we found out it was Certificate U. They're never any good. No, no, I suppose not. <laughs> well, we won't, um, I mean, that is... <laughs> Cheerio, Jeremy. Nice to have this chat with you. See you later, Carol. Well, now, Tina, with Anne and Tony in there and Carol and Jeremy in there, there's only one place left for us. Where? Pools of Desire. (laughs) That was A Life of Bliss with George Cole as David Bliss, Brenda Bruce as Anne Fellows, Colin Gordon as Tony Fellows, Deborah Watling as Carol Fellows, and Muriel Pavlo as Tina Holliday. Impersonations by Psyche and Percy Edwards. Other parts were played by Peter Hawkins and David Lander. A Life of Bliss is written by Godfrey Harrison and produced by John Brown.